Take a look. No. <laughs> hmm. It's it's a cool look into the future. Hi everyone and welcome back to my shop. I made an episode on Element 14 about this little device. Thanks for the appreciation, thanks for all the comments and likes. I really enjoyed um, to see the outcome of my first video. I've seen it so many times that I really didn't know if it's any good. <laughs> Regarding that feedback I've heard a lot of things like hey why don't you put it in resin and I was like sure. I can totally put that in resin and make a video on my channel. And I've already 3D printed this. Um, I've designed a little case and there's my little logo in here and I've made it a bit more haptic and um, whoop, as you can see, it's it fits the case. Um, there are some mechanical parts in here that make this a bit tricky to do because if any resin gets into the switch or into the buttons or let's say the battery compartment is compromised i could probably drill it out but anyway it makes it not functional anymore and i don't want that so there's some planning to be done let's talk about the switches and everything else later the first thing we definitely need to do is to add the silicone to the mold i just have to add the non-adhesive spray i'm not sure what it's called but um release spray okay the inside is one point no sorry it's 18 millimeters 117 millimeters i made a square box around this so yeah one liter is thousand cubic centimeters so 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters is in fact a liter so that means if i have a box of 10 by 10 by 2 that makes 200 milliliters right if i need roughly 200 milliliters i just need to find a little plastic cup that can hold that okay 100 milliliter here we go <laughs> I'm holding it against the light. Okay, a bit more. What a mess, what a mess, what a mess, what a mess. So now it says I have to mix it up so it's not stripy anymore. And mix it up for about a minute. Ah, too many bubbles. Okay, no idea what's happening here. Okay, seems like it's curing already. Or I didn't really mix it up right. <laughs> ah well. This probably has to cure for a long long time i have to check the the numbers oh yeah Very nice. I'm sorry. But yes, that's cool. And I need to get rid of this wobble wobble knob knob. One thing that already happened is um, I tried to make sure that the components that are mechanical and open wouldn't um, get stuck with uh, resin. Even doing that. Ah. I botched it. The switch is now useless. It's uh, it's glued together, and also the um, IC pulled the resin. So I have to resolder everything. And 
this is exactly what I what I didn't want to do but now I'm doing it because I I kind of want to see it so I have to pull through and I might switch out the switch for read relay but then I want to kind of have something mechanical instead with magnets this is 18 grams and we need more I'm going to aim for 30 grams ah okay making a mess already I'm going to add 15 to 16 grams so let's hit at least 46 grams now I'm gonna steer steer like crazy so we have about six minutes and I don't want to overshoot this make the strip from far oh. Lower, but steady. Okay, it would really, really help out if I had a surface that is straight right now. And I think I can't really get rid of the bubbles by just puring it. Oh. This is plenty. I'm gonna try to move the bubbles away. Carefully dragging out the bubbled area here. While the resin was curing, I prepared the handheld for being put into resin and I removed the copper material and the switch. I'm gonna drill some three millimeter holes for the magnets to glue them in first. So the plan is just to have them evenly spaced out and then we'll go from there. Okay, so magnets are in. Put on some hot glue over here. Also, the frame is not connected anymore, but I wanna put it in there. Yeah. All or nothing.
So there are some words of warning or wisdom left to say. Um, the buttons, they actually got a bit of resin into them, but I was lucky enough that I um, just had to scratch out the resin because um, it was stuck between the moving part and the rest of the button. So if you ever do this, don't flatten out the pins in any way. I say just keep the buttons as they are and um, make them protrude, protrude out as much. I had to switch the IC socket. You've seen it in the video that, um, that it sucked in the liquid form of the glue of the resin and whatever. Um, so I had to switch it to this kind of IC socket. And also the battery holder is a different kind of type that I used in the um, build before. The read switch is very sensitive um, because it's enough to have another magnet connected to this magnet to activate the console. Uh, it's tough to see, but I don't really need anything that switches the whole thing or have something here that you can shift along. And I think the placement of the magnets is wrong for that as well. So I'm just like, okay, I'll put the magnet on the battery and then whenever I want to turn it on, I have the magnet ready and then very happy that everyone got me to really do this. Um, the, you might have wondered why it's diffused. That's because it's um, the silicon took the um, surface structure of the 3D print and just really cloned it very well. And the resin, when I poured it in, um, it creeped into everything. So if I would have wanted to have this shiny, I probably would have to send the 3D print a bit more and then clear coat it and everything. So make it shiny to get something that's shiny as well. This is okay because it hides some imperfections and you can see and still get the concept from the front, but from behind it's not that visible anymore that I used hot glue to seal the holes and maybe some dodgy soldering is hidden as well. So now I have this little handheld case and resin. I think this is really a finalized project. So thanks everyone for watching and have a nice one and we'll see us next time on whatever channel it will be. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Bye.